We make automotive content, we love automotive content, and today we're gonna to go through our favorite automotive content creators. So starting off, to be honest, I don't watch anywhere near as much automotive content as I used to, purely for time. Yep. But there are some channels that you do try and watch, even if it's only once a month. Yep. You tune in and see what they've, what they've been up to. Yeah, so why don't sure. you give us, uh, start us off on what you, I think you watch a bit more. Yeah, I watch, I watch a fair bit just to get ideas and I just mm. like to watch it anyway. I don't really watch normal TV these days. No, um, I don't really even watch Netflix or anything mm. like that. I, I watch a lot of YouTube um, and, and a lot of content creators on there. So uh, starting off with my top five, uh, number five is HP Academy. So a lot of people might be unfamiliar with this channel. These guys essentially create content in terms of aftermarket EFI tuning. Um, so in my in my line of work, I, I do, I like to keep up to date with the latest technology and, and certain ways of doing things. So um, I'm always trying to learn about the latest and greatest things and, and, and you know, learn different methods on how to do things. So um, the biggest issue a lot of people may have out there is people think they know everything. Um, and it's it's not the case. If, if you stop learning out there, then just give up, basically. You always mm -hmm. got to keep on learning, keep advancing, and keep on top of things. And these guys produce some really good content, really, really detailed. Um, and it's based mainly off their website, but they also have um, some short snippets on YouTube as well that you can get a taste for what they do. Yeah. So um, that's my number five. I know you, you've, you've seen some of their stuff before, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and speaking of that, like I also like, um channels like Engineering Explained, which is sort of it's similar but different. Yep, yeah. yeah, for sure, yeah. So number four for me is is Motor Trend um, and the, their show Engine Masters. So again, something that's not just the pure sort of, I, I really dislike that Discovery Channel sort of fabricated nonsense um, reality TV show like, yeah. like yeah. Um, oh, I can't even think of it now, the Richard Rawlins one, um, Monkey Garage or mm. whatever. I hate that. I mm. cannot stand that crap. That is just the most unbelievably scripted. Oh, yeah. I, I can't, I cannot watch it. I can't watch more than five minutes of it. I know a lot of people who like automotive shows think, think that that's what an automotive show is. I can't no. stand it. So I, I don't watch any of that. Um, Motor Trend um, have a lot of good shows. The one I like the most from that is Engine Masters because again, what they do is yeah. they essentially, it's a dyno, an engine dyno, and they test things back to back. So they'll have one intake versus another or um, this turbo versus that turbo or, or that engine versus this engine or, or doing basically changing a camshaft and seeing how much more power that makes. And it's it's unbelievably good technical information for people and it just it's really really well produced it's really slick um i really love that that um out of all the channels all, all the shows that that motor trend make um that's probably my favorite uh number three would be uh a youtube channel um two guys in a in a garage in the uk somewhere bad obsession motorsport with their project binky i know you love this channel oh, I, I, I do love the guys um they've got that that really dry British humor yeah. um but they, they really really um, detail their fabrication and how they go about it. So a lot of their stuff's done the traditional way, mm. old school. Um, yeah. So, so it, it, they don't have um, really expensive machines in that. They do sort of very similar. We've done Project Redline when we need to make stuff. They just use a cardboard template, cut it out, cut out the steel, bend it, weld it, and, and put it all together. Now the, the car, I guess the only criticism these guys cop online is that they, I think they've been building it for about <laughs> thirty years now. <laughs> it looks like it's going to take another thirty years to continue building it, but. Um, uh, we'd love for the videos to come out more often, yeah. but we know full well oh, ourselves how, how hard uh, it is. 40, 50 minute video and yeah. it's all very tech based. Yeah. And for those who haven't seen it, why don't you tell them what's yeah, going on? Yeah, so, so it's it. essentially it's a, it's a mini with a GT4 Toyota, a 3S GT, four wheel drive running gear in it. So mm. it, it's, it's, yeah, they've got a mini shell and they've tried mm. to put a Toyota um, so GT4 inside of it. So. Some of the technical issues, just trying to fit all that. And yeah. more into a, into a mini. Yeah, so it, it's fantastic to watch. Um, the, the guys are great together on camera. The, the, the footage and the sound's really clear. Um, and yeah, they, they really, really explain how they're going about doing um, what yeah. they're doing, which is sort of what we've always tried to get with, with the project cars we do, and that we want to explain what we're doing. We don't want it to be a vlog where it's a 10 minute vlog of eight minutes of us on camera, just with a camera here, just talking, mm. and then 30 second montage of like, oh, look at our, our turbocharger now bolted on the car. I can't stand that format. I don't know. I don't know if it's, like like, if, if it's just the way they edited it, but it looks like it's, it looks like you're watching a VHS show. Yeah. Like it's got this weird um, kind of grainy feel to it. Yeah. Like it's from the eighties. It's, it's really good. It's, it's put together really well. Mm. And I really enjoy that channel. So, so number two for me is a show that I know you guys don't know much about which blows my mind being that you are automotive creators and you're especially in the world of drag racing but street outlaws for me 
um, is is number two definitely. I, I love the show. I've been watching it since I think it's been going for about now ten or so seasons. Um, mm-hmm. I picked up on it you know, halfway through the second season. There weren't many people watching it back then, actually. Um, and now it's got, I mean, in the drag racing community, you'd probably be hard pressed to find someone yeah. that doesn't religiously watch it. Except for me. Except for you and your brother, <laughs> you know, which is you know, unbelievable. You know what's, uh, I think a few people, I've said this to a few people and they can't believe it. I've never actually watched an episode of Street Outlaws. Yeah, I I've can't seen, I've seen like a five minute clips here and there, you know, someone crashes or a bit of a banter on the start line, but I've never actually sat down and watched a full episode of Street Outlaws. Yeah, so- Nothing against the show, but it's... Yeah, for, for, for me, no reason I haven't watched it. it it's the closest I'll mm. get to watching any reality style TV show, and that so um, you know it's it's a TV show where a, a traditional sort of TV. It's on Discovery Channel, so it's produced by those guys. So you can understand that it, you know it's it's built around conflict and characters mm. and, and things like not just the racing, but it's never been on YouTube, has it? Uh, no, I, th- I think sometimes some episodes pop up here mm. and there, but it's 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 very hard to get a hold of unless you've got you know some some um yeah ways to get through some of the stuff on discovery so it's mainly yeah it's mainly just on discovery only um and i think in australia we don't get the episodes still the typical that geo blocked everything and we get everything seven years later than it's actually filmed so standard that's just the way we cop it in, in australia but there's you know there's ways around that All right, so um, what's your number one number one um number one for, for me in terms of content this guy creates content um almost daily if not every second day there's something out and um, he's, is that Mark Dice? It's not. <laughs> it isn't Mark Dice. Put your liberal tears um, cup away for now. Um, I guess all you have to say is, um, is is the catchphrase at the start of his videos, and that is "Hell yeah, yeah brother." Yeah, yeah. I think um, we can both agree. We both. We, now that's one show I watch too. Yeah. So Cletus McFarlane, the character Cletus McFarlane, um, was created probably about only eighteen months ago or something. In, in I think it was a, a little video in the back back excerpts of a thirteen twenty video um, shoot when they were preparing for for a show, whatever they're doing it, um, filming at drag racing and. Um, Garrett, the guy who, who is Cletus, um, created sort of the character and since then it's, it's spawned its own channel and his own merch and everything and he's just gone it's well, through the roof and oh yeah. yeah, everything they do now, they've, mm. they've got that many cars and, and the, the ability to do stuff and the you content's know, it's great. One of those, it's one of those channels that you don't necessarily have to be a full car nut to find it entertaining. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're very entertaining. The, the way it's not, it's not that tech, technical based at all. No, it's no, just it's, him basically having fun yeah it's it's it's, it's very it's very cool it's very saying that he's uh, that leroy the uh corvette that stick shift thing that's awesome yeah I, I think that's the biggest thing so i mean if you if you compare it to someone in in australia in terms of guys that are sort of that same thing blow up the mm. internet with unbelievable content and really really well filmed and really well put together would be something like mighty car mods yeah, yeah. but yeah for us mighty car mods do stuff that's you know really not in our level of interest we, we're not really that interested in um you know we, we hardcore drag racing fans so Le- leroy's car runs sevens i think now 780s yeah. are saying 180 plus mile an hour and we understand what that means and, and what it takes to run those times and put a car together like that and that's phenomenal so we just love watching the content love how it's put together and and, and love all the new things i think they just picked up a super the other day one of the guys there so it'll be interesting to see how that goes but in terms of automotive shows that's my five if i had to pick one um content creator that isn't an automotive show, it's probably um, Joe Rogan. I really enjoy watching yeah. um, his podcast. You've got really good guests on and stuff like that. So they're, just, um, they're good, but they're, 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 sometimes just, they're too long. So yeah, they're yeah, and, that, and that's what I, I probably, I may listen to his podcast in the car, yeah. but I'll traditionally just watch the, I think oh, it's the, the clips, channel, the, the clips, the clip clips, channels. Yeah, yeah so they're right, split up into the clips and they're bite sized pieces you can mm-hmm. because yeah, you're right. It's like a two hour, I'm not going to sit there for two hours. Some of them go for yeah, nearly four hours. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're huge in that. So reminds me of the, um, live transmissions from the, the bunker in Texas from some other guy's channel that got deplatformed. They went on forever and ever. They were pretty entertaining to watch too. I'm, I'm, they weren't satirical, but although they were quite funny. But yeah, um, your top five. So my top five, number five would be TRC or that racing channel. It's a little bit like Full Boost, I guess, except mm. the US version. The guy who runs the channel has an awesome street super, like a thousand horsepower super. And he's also, I think he's got an Evo as well. And he makes a lot of the content for Real Street. And he just recently made that really cool um, documentary the, from Drag, Drag Week. Week one. Yeah, that the was one awesome. about the Real Street Super. Yeah. But you always watch his content from uh, World Cup finals and other events every year. It's it, Like you said, he's like the US sort of version of you guys. It, yeah. it, the drag racing content's really great. Yeah. And, he, and he doesn't just focus on one thing. Like he does heaps of imports. He do, you know, domestic stuff. So he's not... A lot of channels just pigeonhole themselves into one type of car or engine. 
mm-hmm. um, like us with the LS. <laughs> Rivalry projects over and over again. Yeah, but my number four would be uh, Roads Untraveled. Now, this is a smaller channel in terms of subscribers, but their content's really good. It's run by two guys who are like ex-film students. Okay. So they know their way around cameras and stuff. Now, this is a bit different than they actually drive people's cars. A bit like the video Geordie and I did with Quentin's um, 7 Second Tirana. And if that's something we'd like to do more of. So if you've got a car that you think you, you wouldn't mind us driving, you know, we can film it as a feature, we'd be happy to do that for some people. But that's what their content's basically about. They take the car, they drive it, they give you their thoughts. Those guys are a bit more into Japanese cars. A lot of the cars, okay. obviously, they didn't get. And the, the young bloke who runs the channel has got an MR2. But yeah, it's, it's one, one to have a look at if you've got a, a spare 15 minutes. Their videos are quite long. A lot of them go for up to 20 minutes. But that's all they do. They don't really do yeah, event coverage. It's not one of, um, to be honest, not one I really know much about or, or watched it. So I'll definitely look that mm. one up. Number two is a channel uh, also from Canada called Speed Academy. Now, they primarily do track stuff, like as in circuit stuff. Uh, they're into Hondas and all sorts of things, but very easy to watch and consume. The guys don't have ego or anything. One, They also run a shop, I believe. Right. So they do tech stuff as well. And they'll do back-to-back comparison, tire tests, boost versus no boost. Um, one of the guys on the channel is quite handy behind the wheel, so he often steers people's track cars. And he'll see if he can get near their lap time. And he's usually only a second off the pace. Yeah. Um, yeah they're really easy to easy to follow and easy to watch. And they put up a lot of content. They'll put up maybe two, three videos a week. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've definitely subscribed to that channel. I don't watch it religiously, but I, I've definitely watched a, a great deal of their content. Like, yeah, like you said, it's, 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 um, it's really good stuff. Now, my number one channel is purely on just quality automotive content is, without doubt, is Gears and Gasoline. Their stuff is second to none. Really, really well mm. made. Like, it's, I look at it from the tech point of view. It's not like they go out to the garage or like this. That's 40 degrees outside, so we've come inside now. And just shoot a, a quick 10-minute video. These are really well-planned, documented videos. They did one that was broken up into three parts where they, a bunch of them did a road trip. Yeah. Well, you know, you're talking like they would have been shooting that over a couple of weeks sort of thing. But it's really, really high-grade content. So yeah, yeah. This, this is the stuff for the 4K fanboys that yeah. love that unbelievable, yeah. that unbelievable quality of content is, is even more important than everything else. But even the, the way they he narrates it and the storyline and everything, it's just it's yeah. so well put I, I can't stand reality-type TV, and this is the yeah. complete opposite of that. It's really well... It's got a total format like it was well thought out before they shot anything. Yeah. So, yeah, if you haven't seen it, get on to Gears and Gasoline. Yep. There are our top fives. Now, it, there's... Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of automotive channels mm. out there and content creators making stuff So there's obviously a fair few that you're probably screaming right now at the screen like how couldn't you mention that? They're the best mother whatever. So we're gonna go through a few honorable mentions now um, We sort of mentioned these guys before Ski, um, Mighty car mods um, and particularly probably more so Skid Factory, Skid Factory. Yeah, yeah I, that on their second channel and they oh, they recently did the, the drag week tour with their Cresta mm. um, That kind of content where they're you know, there's not a lot of the music in the background and and a lot and all that kind of stuff um just pure creating building cars and that's what we like to watch but um the mighty car mod stuff I, I still watch just because it's it is so slick and it's well produced and they work so well together yeah, so yeah and I, I like to watch a lot of aussie content where i can so mm. street machine yep and the carnage stuff is really good yep and also uh motive dvd yeah make definitely. really really good stuff and yep. they obviously um, do heaps on Nissan GDRs, which are very popular. But for Nissan GDR content, yeah, have a look at Motive. Their stuff's really good. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've made um, content recently. They made on comparing the blocks yeah, and stuff, yeah. and that that was that was great. That was yeah. that was really really top notch stuff. I, I really loved watching that. So another one I watch from time to time is um it's it's pretty cool because it sort of lends to our our, our backyard sort of thing is um sloppy mechanics. Mm. So um, the guys from there, um, Matt is basically just a guy working out of his garage and um, the idea behind Sloppy Mechanics is doing whatever it takes to get the job done. So um, if you've ever looked on their their, their, um, their Facebook group, um, the Sloppy Mechanics group page is just an absolute shit fight of it. almost essentially who can do the worst job at getting the job done. So mm. guys putting together exhaust manifolds with stick welders and bloody holding things there with zip ties and oh, it's some of the stuff, it's, it's just unbelievable how bad people can make stuff that still works and and that's what I, and that's why i love watching it because it's not all about the glitz and glamour and the polish of that that if something does a job and it works and it suits its purpose then what's wrong with it what why do you yeah. need to spend twenty thousand dollars on yeah. something to do the same job just because it looks a bit prettier so yeah. 
That's pretty cool to watch. Another channel, um, I probably watch it a bit more than you, is Boosted Boys. Yep. Well, it's basically just a bunch of young kids. Yeah. And they love Honda engines. Yep. Um, yeah, one's I, an MR2, there's a, a Civic, they've got a People Mover. Yeah, <laughs> they've I They've got mean, some really fast cars though. It, it's definitely a channel that I never really watched. About six months ago, if you'd mentioned it, I would have mm. said, there's no way I don't watch that at all. I can't the the it. stuff's, um, not to downgrade their content, but it's very basic in terms of, um, you know, quality. Yeah. There's, there's and, not really any production, but it's behind the scenes of what they're doing. And they don't, unlike me, they're not afraid to get their hands dirty. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. It, it's, it's definitely something I've watched. I've probably watched every single episode of theirs in about the last three months. I've really started to watch a lot of their content. It's it's pretty cool. You're just seeing their story and then they've opened up a big shop yeah, and, then, a big and, work, and work behind shop. the scenes of that. And it's not about them. It's about mm, their cars they're building, which is something. It's been a trend I've noticed recently in a lot of car videos. And YouTube sort of have that magical 10 minute mark of where if you hit 10 minutes, you can load two videos in it. And it's just a, and you know, some of these guys are just producing content every mm. day, every second day. And it's all about them. And yeah. it's about what they're, it's nothing about their cars and that. It's just purely about them, focusing on them, and then all of a sudden... And the, the, title, of, the title of the video, you've, you're seven minutes into the video, and I haven't even touched on the subject of Yeah, the, it's complete yeah. clickbait. Like, the, the video will just be, the, the thumbnail will be like them on the dyno when it's shooting a flame or something, and you'll get, it's an 11 minute video, and you'll get to the point yeah, where it's like no. eight and a half minutes into it, and it'll be one quick 30 seconds of the car on the dyno, and it's like, oh, sorry, yeah, we, uh, yeah, I forgot they even filmed that properly or whatever, and half the time they're out of focus on that yeah. because they're just, they're just, you can just tell they're not committed to creating content. No. All they're create, uh, committed to is making money. Yeah, That's no. it. If, if YouTube turned off monetization tomorrow, we'd still probably be making mm. videos because we love doing it. A lot of other channels like Booster Boys and guys this would still be making content. A lot of these guys, they just stop tomorrow and they go find next avenue to make money, which is like, it's really frustrating to watch, but people watch it. So they, so these guys keep on creating it. And then because they're successful at doing it, more people keep on mm, creating course, other, yeah. other copycat channels. So really the power is up to you, the viewer, that if you don't want to see all this clickbait nonsense, stop watching their, stop watching their stuff. They'll get the message pretty quickly that their content's not wanted and they'll start making something that's, you know, content rich and actually focuses on what people want to see, which is cars being built and things like that. So um, I think my last two, um, so Roadkill and Hot Rod Garage on, on, on Moto Trend On Demand, um, I really like watching those as well. Um, Roadkill's probably for me maybe has become a bit repetitive, if anything now. It's mm. a constant thing of, oh, let's go find a car halfway across the country and drive it back and it's gonna break down 20 times or race it. It's just, it's, it's, I think it's almost run yeah, its race. Yeah. It's been going for a, a quite a while at show, and you know, it's it, maybe it's just got a bit tired. Horror Garage is pretty cool. They're always doing fabricating stuff, at least, and putting cars together. Um, so that's pretty good. Now, because I work in the automotive scene full time, uh, creating content not just for Full Boost but for other clients and doing other stuff, a lot of the time I don't want to watch automotive content because yep. you got to watch other stuff. So to be honest, I probably watch uh, less automotive content than most people watching our videos. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, say, YouTube channels, I like watching uh, uh, R.I.P., but Rich Piano. I used to love it. <laughs> Rich Piano. It was just a comedy fest. I Missed loved the 5%. it. 5%. 5%. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, yeah, watch watched that a lot. Um, Louder with Crowder. Stephen Crowder in the States. He's a pretty funny comedian. Hey, are you a, um, are you a far right, right wing? Far right, yeah. Far right loony. <laughs> Racist. I must be anyone who's not fucking way to the left. or oh, on this side, it should be that side. Yeah. Um, yeah, but one channel I watch flat out is the Pantera official music channel. Every day, reinventing yeah. the steel. I've got everything going on on the second channel. I listen to a lot of music channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I do two in the car and that too, more than, um, yeah, but corn, yeah, stuff like that. So instead of I don't really have Spotify or whatever, if I'm just. No. Short journeys and that I'll just traditionally have got a lot of playlists in YouTube and I'll just um, queue those up and, and, and watch and listen to those in the in the car. Um, and same if I've got something in the background. If I'm in the garage, same deal, I'll just um, yeah, stream YouTube to um, to to the stereo out there and, and listen to that. So I definitely yeah, listen to a lot of music on YouTube as I well. Used to so. listen, I used to watch the Hodge, Hodge, Hodge Twins a bit, but they don't produce much content anymore, unfortunately. So... Mm. Yeah, I don't see them that often, but their videos are still pretty fun. Last two sort of non-automotive ones. So there's Guy's channel, um, Isaac Butterfield. I think you watch a bit of his stuff. The He's pretty... The Butsman. <laughs> He's me, pretty... Me dick stinks. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty funny. Um, he, that, that channel's come from almost nothing oh, yeah, this time yeah. last year to 
six hundred thousand plus of is whatever like it is. Five hundred thousand subscribers. Yeah, so it's, it, it's huge, and, it, yeah. and it, it's funny. It's topical for Australia because mm. he gives, um, you know, our common TV mm. channels like a current affair, especially the project, oh, which are just gutter trash journalist, total crap. Mm. Um, just gives it to them constantly, which is great. I uh, love watching that. Um, the other one for me that I, I, I probably, if you looked up my YouTube watch minutes, it's probably the most, that's um, Cookie Swirl C, <laughs> which I'd just like to thank my three-year-old daughter for imprinting that absolute crap on my brain. <laughs> Watching the, LOL surprises the, be opened the music and blind just, bags. The music scores just get stuck in your head. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, there's plenty of content creators out there. So I guess if there's, um, if you're watching this and you go like, oh, I'd love to start my own YouTube channel, or maybe you've got a YouTube channel that doesn't have a lot yeah. of subscribers yet, you're looking to build content. Um, I'd say the one thing, the one thing that you could do to, to really ensure that the, the content you're making is is of, of a pretty good quality is, um, is audio. So forget about your you know, three thousand dollar DSLR and ten thousand dollar lens. Mm -hmm. If the sound quality is terrible, yeah, you'll find a lot of people just stop listening. I know I do. That there's guys out there actually making some pretty cool content that I that I sometimes will just check in and watch a little bit. But they're either using the the, the standard audio from like their smartphone or they're using the audio or from a the, GoPro. The now the heads up, camera. cameras like GoPro, the standard audio is garbage. Oh, it's terrible. When I use a GoPro, I run an external mic into it, which isn't fantastic, but it's a lot better than this factory audio. So a lot of people, if you're watching this, just go and buy yourself a cheap external microphone if you want to create some videos. They don't have to be, you know, art school quality, film quality. Yeah. Just, it, you've got to be able to listen to what people are saying. Yeah, and, and, and nice and clear. I mean, it, when you're using the normal inbuilt mic and things, it picks up all the background noise of birds chirping and this and that going on. You, you probably heard some of the stuff when I've recorded outside with the when we're doing the garage build series and that because I, yeah. I didn't run an external model, she's using the GoPro then. That's a perfect example of, of you know something where the audio hasn't been quite right. Um, normally you'll have um, lapel mics and and you know wireless stuff and, and powered use, We're not mics, using them now because I'm just lazy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, exactly. But I, I mean, on my normal camera, when, when I've, yeah. I've filmed some of the other stuff at Project Redline, I just have, um, so it's a good quality mic. So it's a mic made by Rode who probably make the best quality mics on, on the market, um, but it's non-powered. So I, I I'm not a videographer. I'm not doing it all day, every day like you. I guarantee you if I had one that was powered, I would forget to turn it on and yeah, I'd have no point. audio. So all it does is plug into the mic jack inside the, in, in the side of the camera and it gives you really, really great um, audio. You know, you get that real bassy tone through for the voice and it's really, really clear. And because it's a shotgun, it'll pick up exactly just what's in front of it. Um, so yeah, if, if that's the one, one thing I'd give advice out to any creator out there, buy a decent microphone. Mm. Yep. And just for the record, we don't use DSLR cameras at all. You yeah, think that's about it? So in the comments below, let us know if we missed the channel yeah. um, or what you like to you watch, like to watch yeah. um, and maybe what you want to see from us more in the future. Mm -hmm. is, um, we've got project cars planned. You know, we, we've recently done an update on our project car, Project Redline. Um, we're going to have more project cars coming on, on board this year in 2019, but if there's something else you want to see from us, let us know in the comments below.